Hey boys and girls, welcome to another video. How do you like that headline? The three biggest myths of the clay bar. Did you even know that there's some myths about the clay bar? Well, I know there's some myths or some really just bad information and I wanna dissect those for you today. With that said, let's get started. Okay, party people, what exactly are the three biggest myths according to Darren in his world when it comes to the clay bar? Well, myth number one, which is the granddaddy of them all in some cases is, will the clay bar scratch my paint? Basically, no one seems to be talking about it. The simple answer is yes. The more complex answer is, is not all scratches are created equal. And I would not even call what this does to your car paint as scratching, I would call it abrading it. And that's not me playing word games, that's just saying is that there is a difference. So on a light colored car like mine, white, you're not gonna see it. What you will feel and will not hear is desired results. Because this, using this tool, is gonna make your paint feel silky smooth and you're not gonna hear or feel a texture any longer on your car paint. So that's wanted. But what's unwanted, because everything in life comes with trade-offs, is the more rubbing you have to do because you don't know what you're removing. Could be paint overspray, could be industrial fallout, whatever that is. Could be brake dust from your brakes, could be exhaust emissions from your tailpipe. Not all dirt's created equal. So there might be some of you that will have to rub a lot in order to create a silky smooth finish. The more you rub, the more pressure you apply, you will have to accept that you will be introducing some form of abrasions to your car paint. But just know this, because after you're done doing this, you need to apply some wax or sealant. If you find, for example, that you have a dark colored or black car and you see some unwanted effects in the form of abrasions, when you apply your car wax, go in heavy handed and rub harder. In most cases, you will find that it will completely remove or diminish those enough to uh, where you have acceptable results, where you stand back and go, wow, my car is so shiny and double wow, my car is so silky smooth, like hell yes, sign me up. It's my daily driver anyways, or I can't even see those abrasions at all unless I whip out a microscope and the right kind of lighting, and that's just never gonna happen. So that's myth number one. Myth number two is this. Oh my, I've dropped my clay bar onto the ground. I've seen those other videos. They tell me that now I have to Throw that clay bar away. Game over, throw it away. It's like, okay, if you don't mind throwing money away, but it's your car, your world, your pocketbook, your money. How about if you apply a voice of reason, which is why I'm largely here, is to apply that voice of reason to an industry that I find very hyped up in many, many ways. So you pick it up. And like everything else in life, not everything's created equal. Meaning, not every surface that you drop this onto is created equal. In my garage, I have epoxy paint. I have a cement driveway. I have a asphalt road. If I was to drop this on those different surfaces, it will pick up different things. Sometimes it literally picks up nothing. Despite how tacky and sticky this is, that's what's weird is ironically, it does not pick up much stuff. But I can do a visual inspection on it. Say, oh, look it. There's like three dirt particles. I'm going to simply pick them out. Maybe you run this under some water because this is not going to, it's not water soluble. You can get this wet all day long and it's not gonna disappear on you. And you're going to rub it and you're gonna be like, wow, like I feel nothing. How come they tell me I gotta throw it away? Well, I'm pretty sure we know why. And then you flip it over and say, you know what? The side that touched the ground feels exactly like the side that didn't touch, touch the ground. Why are they telling me I gotta throw it away? Well, that's why I call it one of the myths. You don't actually have to throw it away. You can actually apply some critical thinking, examine it, scrutinize it, pick it apart. If you want to, you can take a razor blade, shave some of it off, or you can come to the determination that, you know what, I think it's safe, but if I accept that I'm removing some form of dirt uh, that's bonded to my car paint that I can see on the clay bar, and it is instructing me to just fold it over and knead it in and then get a fresh area or surface to work with, well, guess what? There's a form of dirt in your clay bar. So 
how, how do you reconcile that? Like, oh, I have to immediately throw it away if it hits the, the uh, floor or the ground. It's just not true. Myth number three, wait for it, because it's coming. Myth number three. And not to call out any names, you know, I'm not gonna mention like, I don't know, a guy with a name that starts with C and ends with a fix, or a guy named starts with a P and ends with an organizer. Because what they'll talk about, and here's my lubricant, it's my waterless wash, which is a video for a whole nother time, is pattern. So many videos will tell you whether it's polishing your car, waxing your car, clay barring your car, is you always go either left and right, side to side, or up and down. You never go in a circular pattern. Because circular patterns will create circular scratches. And circular scratches, often referred to as swirl marks, which is a whole nother video for another time, are harder to remove then back and forth, vertical, horizontal, whatever scratches. So it's just simply not true because my fear is this is, well, it's not, it, it's a real fear, I believe. And that is that this industry has enough complexity to it naturally. I take issue when guys make a subject that's already complex enough and they add additional complexity that just adds additional confusion, anxiety, and fear, especially to beginners when it's not necessary. It's what I call making mountains out of little molehills. So the pattern is irrelevant. I promise you I could create a vertical scratch, a horizontal scratch, and a circular scratch, and I could remove them simultaneously at the same rate of removal, regardless of the pattern. So the, your pattern matters not. What really matters is how deep is that scratch. You know, if you're doing a side-by-side -side comparison, it's like, okay, Darren, here's a uh, vertical scratch, here's a horizontal scratch, and here's a circular scratch. You see which one you can remove quickest. It's like, well, you know what's gonna be the biggest determinant? Are a few other factors, like how deep are the scratches? Are they equally deep in depth? How hard or how soft is the clear coat? What type of polish or compound have I chosen? What type of pad, what type of machine? But I know what's completely irrelevant, if everything else was uh, the same, is the pattern. The pattern matters not. And let me apply additional voice of reason. For example, if I have a horizontal scratch here that's like this, and now somehow I was able to take that scratch, lift it off my paint, and move it over here, and now when I'm looking at it, it becomes a vertical scratch. It's like, well, wait a minute. Is that not the same scratch? It's like, no, nope. Down here, it's horizontal. Up here, it's vertical. Or down here, it's vertical. Up here, it's horizontal. It's like, well, okay. Does that really gonna determine how quickly or slowly I'm going to be able to remove that scratch pattern? No is a simple answer. Just like if you do a circular pattern, it matters not. And that's what's weird, it's like, okay, I can take, well, once again, a scratch like this, and I can bring it up here. Now, do we call this horizontal? Okay, if I'm standing here, it's horizontal. But if I'm standing here, it's vertical. Well, which is it, Darren? It can't be both. It's like, well, this is where perspective will determine the results, meaning perspective from here determines that I'm gonna call that a horizontal scratch. From over here, I'm gonna call it a vertical scratch. But has the scratch actually changed? No, it hasn't. So if I take a circular scratch, it's like, okay, do you see why I get frustrated by this industry? It's like, can we just let that go? The pattern matters not. Because once again, this is my fear, is that you've got a beginner. It's already gonna be disturbing enough, by the way. If you're a beginner, which is in many ways likely why you're here is if you accept that there's dirt attached to your car paint that normal washing and waxing will not remove, and this is the only way you're gonna remove it. And everything in life, ha life has trade-offs. So as you do it, you will be disturbed by how much noise you might hear if there's enough contaminants on your car paint. You'll go automatically into freak out mode. So there you are, like, oh my gosh, this sounds so disturbing. I gotta be scratching the crap out of my paint. 
And so you do it, you wipe it off and you say, oh, actually, I don't see anything. All is good. And then you feel it and you're like, whoa, that feels awesome. Like sign me up some more. So now you get all, you know, into the moment, caught up in the fervor of the emotions. And now you're going back and forth because those other channels taught you like only back and forth or up and down. And then suddenly you default to, because you're so caught up in the fervor of the moment, you default to a circular pattern. And then you remember you saw that video on such and such's channel. You're like, oh my gosh, I just produced like swirl marks in my paint. And now it's going to be much harder to remove. Because maybe I watched like Karate Kid too many times, you know, wax on, wax off, circular pattern, circular pattern. And now, and it's just normal. We just kind of default to a circular pattern based on the panel which you're working on. So that's my third biggest myth is you just don't need to worry about it. And this is where I would like to hear from you guys, of course, and, and you can disparage me because I was disparaging some other channels that want to perpetuate this big myth about patterns, whether they're talking about polishing your paint or applying wax, it will create swirl marks or whatever else. So leave me your comments below. By all means, check below each video. There's going to be links that will take you to my websites where I've spent many, many hours writing, taking pictures, formatting those pages to educate you guys, to help you through the learning curve of what's already a complex subject of car care. I'm trying to demystify it, debunk it, demyth it, you can call it whatever you want, and help you guys to go through that learning curve with less frustration and anguish than I had to when I first started out. So with that said, I will see you on the next video.